Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a little time lapse of me painting Simba and Nala from The Lion King. I was really excited but very nervous to do this nail set just because it, I know that these are kind of hard characters to do. I think a lot or a majority of all Disney characters are actually pretty difficult. So yeah, I was pretty nervous but um, I pulled through and I got it done. Um, but this is going to be a video, not like a tutorial, but a Q&A and me doing the nails in the background so that you guys have something to watch and listen to at the same time. Just because I don't think there's a way for me to explain this, like, the way I drew the characters out. But I am going to be kind of debriefing on, like, what I'm doing. Just, like at least a little bit so that you guys can kind of get an idea of how I paint my characters. Um, but I am mainly just going to be doing a Q&A so I'm going to jump right into it. First things first I wanted to let you guys know that I am using Nails by Devs uh, triple long square nail tips and um, let me think if there's anything else I wanted to tell you guys. Um, the brush that I'm using the entire video is also the Nails by Dev 9mm brush. That is the brush that I am using to draw the characters themselves and then I'm actually going to ins insert the inspo picture as well so that you guys can see what I was going based off of. So this is the picture that I found on Pinterest. It is a really cute picture of Simba and Nala with their tails making a heart. I knew for sure that I wanted to do this because Valentine's Day is coming up. So this is technically my first like hand painted character nail set of the year and also my first like actual Valentine's Day nail set that I'm making. So I'm really excited to do it. So we're going to jump right into it and jump into the Q&A. And I decided to start off with a very uh, kind of simple question, but I get this question a lot and I got it. So I asked you guys to um ask me questions on my Instagram story and I also put it here on YouTube um, just in case anyone that doesn't have Instagram wanted to ask a question but I'm gonna start off with some of my Instagram questions first and the main question I always get is when did you start your nail journey I feel like I get this question every time I ask um or every time I do a QA, and a and I want to answer this one first in case there's anyone that's new or just like recently found my channel and they haven't seen my other Q&As. So I started my nail journey in um, I would say 2018 where I started doing nails on myself. Um, I was in high school. I was a senior in high school and I barely started to do my nails like literally towards like the end, the last month of senior year and I started um, just learning how to do acrylic and I learned because I would watch Natalie Carmona's videos and I just knew for sure that I wanted to do my own nails because I would go to the salon. This was way back then in 2018 and I would go to the nail salon and they would charge me like $90 for just like a glitter acrylic set with some diamonds on it or some rhinestones so I knew for sure that I wanted to start doing my own nails ever since I was young I remember since I was like 10 I would put like regular like dollar nail polish on and then dip my fingers in glitter while the gel while the nail polish was still wet and um so that my nails could be like glittery so that was like the glitter method that I used to do even though it never stayed it would it would always peel off but basically my point is for as long as I can remember I always loved things like this. I've always been really into makeup, into hair, um, everything. Everything beauty related I've always loved. So I knew for sure that I loved nails and I was like why not start doing it for myself. At least just for myself. I had absolutely no vision of ever doing it for anybody else. Um, as in like for work. I just uh, wanted to do it for myself and just learn how to do it as like a hobby. Um, because I've always loved to paint as well. So I've always been pretty creative. So that really helped me out. And um, yeah, so that was when I started. And then towards the end of 2019, I, like right a few months before the pandemic started. So I think the pan pandemic started around March of 2020, right? So um, towards the end of 2019, um, I was working a job a normal job a nine to five job and I hated it I was miserable I would cry because I hated working as that but I would literally eat sleep and like think or like I don't know what the saying is but basically I would think about nails 24 7 like 24 7 I would think about nails I would be at my nine to five job sneaking being on my phone looking up nail inspo um just 
looking up ideas for my next nail set. I would always switch my nails up. I always had my nails done because I would do them for myself. And I would always love long nails with really like really blinged out long nails. And I would get so many compliments on them. Even though I was barely a beginner, my nails weren't like perfect, but they were always done. So I loved nail. I loved nails. Like as soon as I got into it, I was like, this is definitely something I love. And sorry, you guys, if you guys see a little nose peeking in and out of the video, my big 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 dog my 75 pound dog loves to come up on my nail desk when I'm working and stick her nose in the camera and just stay there and stare at me like I don't know why she does that but I always make sure she's fed went to the bathroom has water everything she needs but she just wants attention 24 7 she's literally my little baby um so if you guys see her coming in and out of the video that's just her because she just does that so anyway I went off topic but um yeah so I would be on my nine to five and I would always want want to do nails and everything so like I said I was getting a lot of compliments and eventually a lot of people started asking me uh, specifically my coworkers would ask me if I can do their nails and I would I at first I was nervous because I didn't have a good setup honestly you guys I just was doing it doing it on like one of those foldable party tables like literally the tables that you use for a normal party and um I had that as like a little table in my room but I had like the small table and then I had a few nail polishes and some like nail art stuff of course I had the a bunch of rhinestones and things like that but I wasn't like very into it I didn't even have gel polish so I was honestly really nervous I was really scared all I had was acrylic and I was like you know maybe I could just start trying it out on them of course I let them know I was new but I was following all uh you know safety things as far as like sanitation disinfection everything like that because I learned that from Natalie Carmona's channel so I made sure to have all of that in line but I was only doing it for friends so like or co-workers so it, it didn't matter at that time I was just like okay it's for fun um and I was only doing it because they kept asking me so I was like okay yeah I'll do it and then um yeah so the thing is I started like that and then yeah um after that I eventually started to take clients but then the pandemic hit um so then I stopped taking clients and I started doing only press-ons and I have just been doing press-ons ever since um but I do know how to do acrylic if you guys scroll way down back on my channel um I never used to do press-on videos really I would do a lot of acrylic videos because I love doing acrylic I actually have multiple videos on here I think where I was doing acrylic on my clients so if you guys want to go back and look at those just to see how my acrylic application used to be um, I'll put the videos in the description box for you guys but um, I loved doing acrylic as far as like actually doing it because it's so satisfying but I felt like it just wasn't for me honestly it just really wasn't I am very 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 introverted and honestly I'm pretty antisocial. um I know you guys probably wouldn't get that vibe from me with like the way I sound in my videos because I am actually like a really talkative person I love to talk I could talk all day but I have to get like a good vibe from someone and if I don't then honestly I just won't talk and I'm just very quiet I don't like parties I don't like anything like that I like being at home so um, if you guys relate to me, let me know in the comments. But yeah, that's just how I am. So um, it was really hard for me to have to meet so many new people. I had a few bad experiences as well with customers. So it's just like those type of things that kind of um, steered me away from wanting to do acrylic. And then, of course, starting to do press-ons. And then after, like, once the snail salons and stuff opened up, I did do a few clients still. Um, but then like I said I realized it just wasn't for me so I just stopped doing it all together um and yeah press-ons is honestly what I love to do it's just amazing I love it so much um the other thing is acrylic really like the monomer really started making my head hurt really bad and it makes me feel kind of dizzy I think I just I'm not used to it anymore so yeah that's just the main thing about that so I hope that kind of gives you a, just a quick little insight I know I took like I don't even know more than five minutes to explain that but I just really wanted to give you guys a little bit of background on me in case you guys are new to my channel so now I'm gonna scroll down and find another question um someone said what do you apply the press-ons with the nail glue or yeah so I um do apply press-ons with nail glue and I do send uh, nail glue in all of my press-on orders so the nail glue that I feel like works the best in my opinion that you can get in bulk is the McCart one I think you can get like 50 or 100 pieces um from the McCart nail glue on Amazon so that's the one that I use 
Uh, um, someone said, do you get requests to make acrylic press-ons and do you accept or deny? So I have never gotten requests to make acrylic press-ons, honestly. And if I did, I would just say, oh, no, I don't do that. I'm sorry. I'm not probably not the uh, press-on artist for you. And I would steer them to some people that are because I do follow a few girls that do a acrylic press-ons. So I would definitely send them their information. But, uh, for me personally, um, honestly, no one has ever asked me. So, um, yeah, if anyone, if anything, the only thing that somebody, most, a few people have asked me before is if they're strong, because a lot of people see press-ons and then they think that they're like the Walgreens press-ons and they're actually literally nothing like that, especially mine. I feel like mine are very, very strong. The only time they don't come out super, super strong is if they're like, um, the ones that are only like one coat. I still try to make them strong, but those are just not as strong as like a ones ones with multiple layers of designs because the more layers of gel you put, the literally thicker, the thicker the nails are going to be, the stronger they're going to end up. But I do always make sure that they're pretty sturdy and pretty strong and I've only had like two people ever tell me that they broke a nail. So, uh that kind of goes to show um and yeah, so the next question that I got is, what are your pet peeves about customers? So this is a really good question. Um, I feel like my main pet peeve of customers is the fact, and this goes with anybody, like this can go if you do gel X, if you do manicures, if you do any type of beauty service in this industry, where you will put your policies up or explain how to order or explain anything and like nobody reads it like they'll just message you and be like oh how does it work how do you do this how do you do that and like you have a whole post saying that or a whole bunch of information on that and people will not read it just because me personally like I know I'm in the industry but even if I wasn't I feel like I would definitely try to search like their whole page to make sure um, there isn't already information there that I could just read just so that I'm aware of things ahead of time. So that's like one main thing that is a pet peeve, definitely. And another pet peeve is when somebody will not explain it what they want fully but then at the same time still be super picky, if that makes sense. So they won't like explain to like to the T in detail um what they were looking for and then maybe like later on come and say that they don't like their nail set that is a really big pet peeve of mine because if you're really really picky I feel like you right off the bat you should let the person know whether it's with your hair your eyebrows lashes anything like right off the bat tell them exactly what you want to the point so that you don't have to deal with it later and um you don't end up getting something that you don't like so yeah that's another pet peeve of mine for sure um, my next question is, what nail design do you hate the most? So honestly, this is a really good question. The nail designs that I hate the most, both like to do and I guess to have on nails in general, is 3D flowers. I just don't like them. Specifically those ones that are, don't look like a real flower at all. Like they have like the two long like petals one on top one on the bottom and then three small ones on the sides of course I've done them before because I do customer requests I do whatever the customer has asked me for but personally I don't like doing them and I don't like them in general if you do like the regular little flowers I do like those but um it's just my me personally because I feel like they don't look like real flowers but if you do like 3d roses or something that looks a little bit more like an actual flower would look then yeah I really like that so, I don't know, I guess it's just the specific style of flower that I don't like. And then another nail design, this is more goes for, this one go, mo, goes more with what I don't like to do, but I do like seeing it, like I love the way it looks, um, is the Aura nails. I hate doing them, like literally hate them so much, but I love the way they look. They look so pretty. Um, so yeah, that's just my own opinion, personal. Um, another question that I got is, do you compare yourself to other nail techs? And yes, all the time. I find myself comparing a lot, but I try to not focus so much on other people's posts. If you know your personality and you know that you're a little bit more, uh, hard on yourself with your work. I would recommend just don't look so much at people's things. Honestly, that helped me a lot, especially was when I was like 
beginning or a few months or like a year or two into doing nails I just noticed that it would take a toll on me so I was just trying to stay off of social media a little bit more I would obviously still post every single day but I wouldn't like go and look at people's actual like posts of nails or anything because I didn't want to compare myself and make myself feel bad um so that is like the one thing because everybody starts somewhere that's like another thing you have to think about everyone starts somewhere and they're just you'll get to a good point eventually you just literally need to practice every single day um like right now the one thing that I would be comparing myself on with others is like my character art so like this set in particular or this one that I'm painting right now um I felt like it came out good and it actually actually does look like the um inspo picture that I showed you guys earlier but I was a little hard on myself because I feel like something looks off and I can't be so hard on myself because I'm drawing on a little nail and I took inspo from like an actual picture so obviously like I'm not going to be able to fit the whole entire thing on it unless I draw it super small so I have to stop being so hard on myself in that sense but um yeah another thing you guys this has nothing to do with the question but I actually wanted to explain to you guys how I draw my characters so as you guys can see if you guys have been watching what I've been doing is I just sorry my phone's been going off I just realized that um but if you guys have been watching the way I paint my characters is I color block so I started off with drawing the entire silhouette of both lions so I started with Nala and I drew her whole entire silhouette I basically just kept looking up at the inspo photo and then I filled it all in with the base color that I was going to need and then little by little did more um color blocking so like then I did the color of the ears and then I slowly did like the eyes and the mouth that's just the way I feel like works best for me because then after I'm done with the color blocking I go in with my black liner gel and then I add all the detail work so this is just the way that I do it and I learned this way from Nails by Dev um if you guys have tried to paint characters and you guys really really struggle and if you guys do it the way where you're like you go straight in with the liner gel and draw out like the character and then try to fill it in later or I don't know if that makes sense but if you guys do that that's way harder than just starting off with like the color and then outlining everything at the very end. So I hope that makes sense. I hope I explained that correctly but yeah this is just what I'm doing. Um, so anyway yeah now let's continue with the questions. Um, someone asked me uh what nail creators do you look up to so the nail creators I look up to the most is is like nails by dev I was gonna say obviously but I know some of you guys may be new but nails by dev is like one of my main creators I look up to in like every aspect um I love her vibe I love how she paints characters and she's starting to get into like portraits and she's just getting better and better I watch her lives all the time if you guys are ever watch her lives, I'm probably in there watching it as well. Um, I have her like notifications on and I always go and watch her lives. But I just learn a lot from her as far as just watching her work. Like she doesn't even have to explain anything, but just watching her, you can learn. And um, that's what made me want to start painting characters more. And I love painting characters in general or painting anything in general. I love the art aspect of nails. Um, I love bling as well. I'm a bling girl all the way. But as soon as I got good at bling placement and applying everything else, I knew for a fact since the beginning that I wanted to start getting into characters or not even just characters like cartoons, like any type of character, like, like just painting anything in general that's a little harder I really wanted to start getting into that so that's why I'm starting on that journey now and trying to get better um and I'm actually sticking to it you guys I'm actually trying to paint characters like any chance I get so it's even if it's a little difficult I will at least try like with this one with Simba and Nala I honestly didn't know if this video was going to come out good I was like oh well I'll film and if it doesn't come up good at all I'm just not gonna put it up but I honestly surprised myself with how good I did considering it was like my first um, harder type of Disney character because Disney characters are pretty difficult. Um, but yeah, so Nails by Dev is one of the main one main people I look up to. And then my next person I look up to a lot is Votino. I love his work as far as like his creativity and just 
the way he just does things is so beautiful like his bling placement and things like that I'm like how does he think of this like it's so beautiful so extravagant and so intricate I love that about his work so um also the way he makes his videos is so cute um that's another way I look up to his work is because of the videos he makes and just like his consistency is what I look up to as well um that's also the same thing that I look up to with uh nails by dev just their consistency and overall just passion for what they do you can just literally tell like it's crazy how you can literally tell um how much passion they have in their videos and just when they're painting so um I look up to them to the most um because I follow a few other like big, big, big creators, nail creators or just nail creators in general. And I feel like you can kind of tell that like they're trying to do really nice work, but I feel like they're not putting like a thousand percent into it. Like they're kind of just throwing content out, content out to just put content out, even though it's not their best work. And I get that. I totally get it because you have to post a lot for the algorithm to like keep you on like people's feed but I don't know I just get different vibes from different people I, I'm just really like I'm a really big empath and I feel like I could just feel things through the video I know that might sound freaking weird and I hope I don't sound crazy but yeah so that's kind of like a background of why I look up to them um someone said um drawing tips and best gel for drawing so my biggest tip like I mentioned earlier is to color block first your characters and start off with easy characters like start off with characters that you go on Pinterest like literally go on Pinterest and look up cartoon character and any character even if you don't really like the character or if you don't really know about them or if you've never really seen the show or movie if they look simple like they don't have a lot of colors a lot of really small details I would totally recommend to just pick up a brush and try to paint them because it might be easier than you think. Um, and all of the gel that I use to draw every single time or to, yeah, to paint characters is always the um, Nail Reserve LA gel polishes. They're so, so good. Like they're really good for painting because they're very pigmented. It's almost like painting with a painting gel or like um, a liner gel, but they're not so so thick and they're not expensive so that's why I love the brand I genuinely do love the brand because I actually use their products I use them all the time in every single video because I actually love them like I love their stuff and I do have a code with them and that's this code the code has nothing to do with anything like I'm not saying that I have a code with them or saying that they're my favorite gel polishes only because I have the code I have the code because I genuinely love the brand's products like actually so yeah their stuff and of course nails by devs things are amazing as well the only thing is I don't have a lot of her regular gel colors so I never really use those to paint in my videos I have a lot of nail reserve LA so that's why I use them and I love their stuff but as far as nails by dev her liner gels are incredible I've only tried the white and the black but they're amazing so I can only imagine how amazing the other ones are I'm just honestly saving up so that I can buy her liner gels and try them out because I know I'm gonna love them but I just can't say right now because I haven't tried out the other colors but um yeah from what I see in her videos she always uses them and her live video her lives so hers are very good and another tip I have for drawing characters is to use a very thin very very good quality brush and I don't mean expensive expensive brush like 20 plus 25 30 dollars I just mean like a good brush so nails by dev has good brushes I use all her brushes um or no I only use her brand of brushes to paint characters like I said, I'm using the 9mm liner brush and to clean up any small details like I'm doing here, I use the Little Baby Blender brush. I don't know if she still has that one, but I know she has a little a little blending brush and that's the one I use for cleaning up. Um, and yeah, that's just what I found has really helped me with my character art. I have three of her 9mm liner brushes and those are what I use. You can also use the Helicute liner brush. 
Um, she also has a Dreamliner brush collection or like a little bundle of three brushes and they're called the Dreamliners. I really want to get those because she used those on her live to paint Spongebob and it looks amazing. Like the brush looks amazing and I really, really want to get it. But like I said, I have to save up a little bit of money so that I can get like everything I want because I want the liner gels. I want her duck nail tips and I want her uh, dream liner brush trios. Um, I want that and I also need to pick up another um, matte top coat and glossy top coat as well. So I'm just I want to buy everything all at once so I don't have to buy so much or pay shipping multiple times. So yeah uh, once I get the liner gels I'll definitely be using them for characters and you guys will definitely know because I'll for sure let you guys know in my videos. Um, sorry you guys I feel like I'm talking fast but because I only have 45 minutes I'm like kind of going fast. Um, someone said tips to overcome imposter syndrome. So this was like such a good question. Like, honestly, I love this question. Um, for anyone that, that doesn't know what imposter syndrome is, I'm going to read you guys the definition right now. So it's, so I looked it up. It says imposter syndrome is the condition of feeling anxious and not experiencing success internally, despite being high performing in external objective ways. Uh, this condition often re results in people feeling like a fraud or a phony and doubting their abilities. So I deal with this a lot, like literally a lot, you guys. I get called out for it actually a lot from by you guys. Um, multiple people that watch my videos and support me have messaged me personally and told me like, you need to stop doubting yourself. Like you always say that you're not the best artist or you're not the best at this or that and they're like you literally are like you're so good and like I totally understand that and I appreciate those of you guys that support me I just do deal with imposter syndrome I feel like everybody at one point probably does unless you're like super 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 conceited I feel like um but honestly I always feel like that like I posted this a few probably more than a year ago or a few months yeah probably more than a year ago but I it, I think it was when I hit 50k or I'm not sure how much I hit on Instagram but I posted on my story I screenshotted how much I hit on Instagram and I was like thank you so much for 50k I don't remember if it was 50k it might have been 20k it might have been I don't know 60k I'm not sure but um I basically screenshotted it and I was like thank you so much for everybody that supports me and follows my instagram and likes the work that i do and then i said i often see what i do as so insignificant and to see this many people supporting my work blows my mind honestly and i feel like that's a form of imposter syndrome because i feel like i am just like another nail person in this world like nail artist in this world and i feel like i get imposter syndrome because like i said i do compare myself and i do feel like i'm not doing the best that i could absolutely be doing like I often doubt myself in a lot of ways um, and the way that I feel like um, you can get over this is to celebrate your tiny victories like tiny victories like if you notice that you had a few extra like like here here's a good example so if you take a long time to do sets let's just say normally in a week you can only finish two or three nail sets let's just say because I know everybody's different um especially if you have kids if you have a lot of family if you have a lot of things to deal with it's very hard to get a lot of nail sets done and let's just say one week you just managed to squeeze in five to six nail sets and you feel like a little bit proud of yourself I say you celebrate that like literally celebrate that go get yourself a cup of coffee go get yourself um I don't know, something that you've been wanting, even if it's not expensive, even if it's just a freaking ice cream or something small, if you've been craving something and you want to go get something to eat, literally just get it for yourself as a small victory because I think it's a really big deal to do that so that you don't get imposter syndrome, so you don't feel like you're not achieving anything or you don't feel like you're doubting yourself. Um, if you celebrate yourself little 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 by little by little eventually you're eventually just gonna feel like you should always celebrate yourself if that makes sense and I think that is that should be a big a big deal like um just celebrating your little victories like for example this video right here is an example of me uh 
basically hitting one of my goals. Um, I really wanted to do a character set for fun. I didn't want to tell myself like, no, I'll just wait till someone orders a nail set that has a character because I do that a lot to myself and I did it all, my, all on my own. Like I just grabbed my brush and grabbed my nails and started painting these characters right here. And this was a victory for me. And this helps me not get imposter syndrome because I... It makes me realize my abilities, honestly. And also, I would recommend, even when you feel like your work may not be good enough, post it on your Instagram anyways. Post it anywhere that you can. Like I said, you have to be consistent to grow your social media. I've said that so many times before, and we might touch on that topic a little bit in this video if we have time. But... Um, I posted this this a video of this set and I got so much love on it you guys like so much love on it on Instagram and I genuinely thought that nobody was gonna like it I'm not even kidding and that is the biggest form of imposter syndrome me feeling like I'm my post was like insignificant or not good enough and then getting so much love on it anyways like made me really realize that I have to stop doubting myself so that is like a, a biggest way a really good way of doing that um if someone really likes your video no matter what they will comment they will like even just the like makes you like that's how you know even if someone just likes your video or reel even if they don't comment like that means that they like it because there's a lot of people that do not like reels or photos like my boyfriend is one of those people like he'll scroll for like a long time but he'll never like anything and I'm like that's so weird like I feel like Sometimes I catch myself doing that too where I scroll and even if I like something I won't like like I won't press like or I won't like comment um, because I'm more of like a silent watcher like I just don't really do that but um, if someone likes your things that's how you know like they like your stuff so just don't doubt yourself and yeah I don't want to take too long to talk about this one question but um, I hope that kind of helps you guys a little bit. Um... Someone said, um, how do you deal with multiple orders when you're the only one creating them? So that is a good question and it's actually very hard. Like it is really hard. I try to give myself kind of like, um, a, like quota, if you will, like a quota, like how much I have to meet within a week. And honestly, I almost never meet it because I give myself way too much leniency. I need to be way, way, way more strict on myself and I need to have way more discipline. That's one of my goals for this year is to have discipline because I don't have a lot of discipline and I don't have good time management. So I'm always running super late on making my orders on time. But the one thing I do need, I do want to say is um, give yourself like a, a re very reasonable time frame of when to create sets. So, if, for example, if you notice that you're very busy during the mornings, um, set a certain a few hours at night for you to finish at least one to two sets. That'll really help you. And if you do that every single day, that'll really help. Like by the end of the week, your orders will be all ready to ship out all together and then you'll realize like wow I actually did a good amount of orders um so that's like the one thing I would say that helps me a little bit another thing that helps me which I know a lot of people don't have the like it's not it, I would say it is a luxury but my boyfriend is actually the one who replies to almost all of my dms um, as far as like anything that has to do with orders, he is the one that replies, not me. I reply to anybody that sends a personal message. Like if someone says that they're from my YouTube channel or if someone asks me a question or anything like that, then I will reply. But if it's like something to do with orders, he's the one that replies. So that does really help me out as far as like getting my nail sets done because I don't have to worry about the DMs. Um, and yeah, that's like one thing that helps me. Um, so I hope that kind of answered the question. Someone said, um, um, someone said, are you going to continue to post more nail videos? Miss them. Yes, I'm going to post more nail videos. I'm actually going to get kind of personal with you guys right now. I actually have been dealing with the death of a family member um the past few weeks so that's why I had it I was like honestly off of Instagram for a while and off of YouTube for just a little bit because it happened out of nowhere it happened on Christmas Eve so I was just dealing with a lot of family stuff and things like that and that's why I 
was just off of social media and I wasn't making videos and I wasn't even filming so yeah I'm back to it now everything's good and I'm going to continue with my videos I am so appreciative of you thank you so much for watching them Jess thank you um I appreciate you so much and I'm so glad that you like my videos um and another question that I got is do you have any tips for getting customers as a press on artist so I actually got multiple questions of like this um so my biggest 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 tip is to post as often as you can um, I've said this before, but if you don't have a lot of time to uh, to do press-ons or to do nails in general, even if you could do just one little nail design on one nail, post it anyway. Make sure you have good lighting. Make sure it's not super dark where you're filming. And um, make sure you have good lighting and just record a quick little like a 5 to se 10 second clip of your nail that you created it could be a character it could be a super easy like butterfly it could be a really pretty like glitter heart design with rhinestones it could be a marble nail anything like literally anything if you don't have time to create a full set and you still want to practice and you still want to post content post just one nail literally I'm not kidding. You can literally do that and you will still gain more following than if you were posting nothing. So I totally recommend you do that. Um, I'm going to start doing that as well. Posting little quick tutorials of like little just like one simple nail. Um, because I feel like for people that like shorts and like YouTube shorts, YouTube reels and TikToks, I'm going to start doing that and posting it on TikTok because I don't post on TikTok a lot and I kind of want to start posting on there as well just because it's a good form of engagement for all of my social medias and also because I can probably gain another type of um, just like a different type of like I don't know feel I guess because I'm not really a tiktoker <laughs> so I don't know I know they're kind of ruthless on tiktok but I'm gonna start posting little videos and little tutorials of just super easy designs and posting them on my shorts here on youtube as well but I'm still doing my normal videos like normal this is just something I'm gonna do extra in addition to what I already do um so if you want to start doing stuff like that totally recommend that um because I feel like people will totally like to watch just little quick videos of nail designs um all you need is a tripod from amazon like a simple little tripod you do not need anything fancy i think my tripod is like less than 30 bucks i don't remember because i got it a while ago but i will put the tripod that i use in the description box in case any of you guys have been wanting to get started um with like any type of videos not even just tutorials like if you just want to get clients or customers post your designs that you already did like even if you do like any type of design post it um just like how I do if you guys follow me on Instagram I post just like my finished product post that but with just one little nail and trust me that will help a lot but make sure you're posting a lot like every single day if you can um even if it's something simple just do it trust me it's gonna help um so that's like my biggest tip for anybody that's barely beginning uh another question that I got was how do you do taxes I want to start as well but I'm stuck um so for taxes all you need to do is make sure you save all of your receipts for anything that you buy that's related to your work um if you have like a different type of business where you do like um not like a different type of business but like if you have um like YouTube income or things like that you could just get a 1099 form I think I don't know what kind of form it is but there's like a form that you get sent and if you just do like uh customers like I do like I just sell press on nails all you have to do is just save up everything that you waste and then just keep track of like anywhere that you're getting your income and then the tax preparer preparer will honestly just explain the rest I'm honestly not good at it either I'm not gonna lie I do not really know what to do I just listen to whatever they tell me to do and I'm like okay even if I'm scrabbling the last freaking day to get all my paperwork together at least I'm getting it done so yeah that's like how I am I don't really know like the ins and outs of everything so I'm not really the best person to ask about that um but the next question I got was um um what method did you learn first first thing I ever learned was acrylic um I think I mentioned that earlier Someone said, um, 
Does your mat ever smudge your polish even when the gel is already cured? The answer is yes. It happens a lot when you're using liner gels. It happens even with this with my Nails by Dev liner gel. It doesn't matter if the liner gel is good quality. You can cure it like four or five times for 60 seconds and it'll still possibly smudge. It's a possibility. So you guys will notice at least a few times throughout this video, I will go in with a lint-free wipe and wipe off the gel after it's already cured and it'll still take some like black smudge off. Um, that is how I make sure that the nail is good to go. I always make sure to at least wipe it with a little bit of alcohol um, with a lint-free wipe before I do any type of top coat, whether it's matte or glossy. Just wipe it off first, but obviously make sure it's like fully, fully, fully cured or else it'll take off your design. But um, it'll take off any residue. I noticed that there's a lot of residue with all black gel polishes and all like red or purple, really, really opaque gels um it'll help it'll happen it's bound to happen it's right it's normal so yeah just make sure you wipe it off and you should be good to go um someone said um let me see tips to get your first clients and customers so um i mentioned earlier that being very consistent is very very important so you can get customers just because people will be able to see your designs and they'll be, they'll be able to see what you're capable of and they'll feel more comfortable to go ahead and ask you to create a design but another thing i would recommend is to create some type of sale like a sale where even if you're not making a lot of money at least you're going to gain new clientele um because i did this when i first started doing acrylic nails and slowly raised my prices after that but i was doing anything for any type of nail set for i think 20 dollars, just anything like literally glitter rhinestones whatever you wanted just because i wanted to gain the clientele and gain people that wanted or like gain people's trust i guess to come try my nails first and then see if they liked it and at least they weren't spending so much if they didn't like my work um so something like that i would totally recommend a sale if you are into doing freestyles i would recommend trying a freestyle sale um if you aren't comfortable creating a freestyle for someone because you're scared that they might not like it you could always say um i want to create a freestyle this is a freestyle sale so i get a little bit of creative freedom but if you want to let me know any colors that you do like or don't like and any type of nail designs or trends that you do or don't like as well, that way I'm that way I'm kind of uh, I kind of have an idea of something you would like me to do on your nails and I don't do something that you don't like. So that's like another thing I would for sure do if I was beginning all over again. Um and yeah, like I said, just create as many designs as you can that you know how to do. If you know how to do a marble, if you know how to do a 3D flower, if you know how to do a French tip, an ombre, just do little nails, uh, post little reels or photos of your nails with the work that you do know how to do so that people can go to you and ask you. Um, also make everything very, very clear. I noticed that people will might not want to order if they are confused on what to do or they are confused on your page or your Instagram or your Facebook or whatever it is. So make sure you are very, very clear. Make sure you post uh you know exactly how to order and everything like that even if they might not read it there might be people that won't read it and they'll still message you and ask questions but at least you're posting it for people that do want to read it and do want things to be very clear between the both of you so that is another question I, another uh tip i have for you um Someone else said, how do you choose what nails to put rhinestones on for your sets of 10 plus nails? So this is actually a very good question. Um, for the sets of 10 plus nails, I think it's like 18 or 20 piece sets, right? Something like that. Um, I think it's 18 piece sets. For those specific ones, I always make sure that I put uh, the rhinestones or like the most extra extravagant nails on the ring fingers. So sizes number seven, seven, six, five, and maybe even four. Um, if you have to do like a lot of rhinestones, obviously just raise your prices a little bit, but it's better for them to have more options um, rather than, you know, be stuck. But you don't have to make every single size the same design of rhinestones if that makes sense like you can totally make it a little different on every nail so that they'll still have something to choose from and if they're like a size of five it's not it's really not a big deal you guys a four will still fit them so um you could just 
kind of make the designs different even if you're still using rhinestones on every on every size or like those specific sizes um just switch it up a little bit and if they end up liking the one that's on number four better even if number five fits them perfectly if number four is only one millimeter bigger and it fits them just a tiny bit bigger they'll totally be okay with wearing it and it won't look weird um so yeah don't worry about it too much but those are the main sizes that i would put rhinestones on um and then just so that they can kind of you know interchange them if they wanted to and then let's see if I got any questions here on YouTube I'm gonna check really quick and if even if I don't answer your questions here on YouTube I will still go ahead and um, keep the post up because I will want it to post it like later or I will go back and read the questions for later for another Q&A in the future so I actually just checked and I got a very, very good question here on YouTube. So I'm going to read it to you guys and then I'm going to explain. So she said, hi, I've been trying to wear the sets I've designed, but they literally won't stay on. Can a person make press on sets with the nails that have structured or higher apex on natural nails with polished gems and it will cure properly under the lamp? Question mark. I came across something that said nails won't, some nails will not cure fully only if they are clear not done as press-ons also what glue do you recommend to hold the gems and gel to fill structured nails currently i'm having issues with my rhinestones falling off and it's so frustrating so firstly i apologize for my dog crying she really wanted to go outside so i just let her out but um this is a very very good question so firstly um you can make the set the types of press-ons where you can cure them with gel underneath the lamp instead of using regular glue the only thing is you have to make sure that your base like the part that's going to be actually on your nail is sheer so it doesn't have to be completely clear it just has to be very very sheer enough so that the uv light can penetrate through so that it cures fully underneath um and I genuinely mean it has to be very sheer. So if you don't like the look of your natural nail showing, there are gels that you can buy that are base gels specifically for this reason uh, to apply like kind of like Gel X, but um, they're not Gel X brand. Um, so I think Ina Couture has some that are colored. There's like a pink one and then there's like a nude one. And those will really help so that you still get the look of like the colored base. Um, but you're adhering it like a normal gel instead of with glue. I hope I'm explaining that correctly. Um, but you could do it. it just has to be very sheer or clear. If you want to do clear, um, you can just do the top half of the nail design and leave the bottom clear. And then, like I said, use that colored nude or light pink base gel. And then go ahead and just uh, adhere your nails with that. And then put it under the lamp and it should cure perfectly fine. That's basically how Gel X works. The only difference is you'll be using a colored gel instead of clear, like a Gel X nail from a Prey would be. Um, so that's like what I, my, uh, you know, I guess opinion. But actually, that's a very good video idea. And I honestly want to make a video for you about that. I feel like I got that question a few days ago as well from somebody on Instagram. So I think if I make a video kind of trying it out just to see how it would work. Um, that'd be a really good idea but of course it's not gonna work if your nails are fully decorated like normal because the gel will not penetrate through and your gel will not cure properly so that's definitely something you do not want um, even if the gel does end up curing a little bit and some of it's not all the way cured you could still get contact dermatitis or just uh, develop an allergy to the gel over time if you continue to do it like that so Yes, my best my best uh, best advice would be to just make sure you either don't decorate the bottom half of the nail that's actually going to be on your nail bed and let it let the light be able to penetrate through or use a very 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 sheer color um and the other like I said the other one would the other uh, option would be to just go ahead and use a colored uh adhes adhesion gel. So that's like the way that I would do that. Um the other thing is for my press-ons for my customers I do not use um, high arched tips for this reason because they won't be able to adhere them right with just normal glue so I always make sure to use just like regular nail tips um, and then another the other question the other part of the question was you have issues with your rhinestones falling off so I would 1000% recommend that you use the Zule's nail bling adhesive it is a glue that dries without a view UV lamp but you do need like a nail sprayer like a nail glue spray 
um, that will uh, dry your glue instantly. So that glue is literally amazing. Your rhinestones will not fall off. They will literally be stuck forever. Like, I'm not kidding. So try that glue. It is amazing. Um, and if you want a specific glue that cures with the uv lamp i saw this girl on tiktok actually just a few days ago i wish i remembered what her name was but she mixes the mccart rhinestone gel with a clear acrylic and then she says that it makes her gems last like forever and that they literally will not come off so you should try that as well maybe that will work but um the zule's bling adhesive for sure without a doubt will not fail you um so yeah that is one of my best that is my best advice um, another good question I got here on YouTube is, hey Val, do you set goals quarterly for your business or do you go with the flow? So my answer is I go with the flow. I do not really set goals. Um, I do set like personal goals like I mentioned earlier where I, where I will tell myself like you need to make at least 10 sets this week or 15 sets this week instead of making only 5 or you need to be more consistent with uploading or be more consistent with posting your content on Instagram things like that as far as goals but quarterly goals are like real real goals as far as hitting like um maybe like a, a money money wise or things like that I never do that because um I'm not sure if this is what you meant but I'm just explaining um because of the fact that it's always changing like there's times where I don't get any orders you guys and it's really hard to get orders or it's really hard for just people in general during certain months um definitely this month of January it's been very very slow and it's been very uh just slow in general like people aren't really ordering nails I feel like and I think it's just because it's after Christmas you know things like that people are probably trying to save more money so I totally get it um but yeah I just don't set goals honestly I go with the flow I feel like I should probably set some goals in certain things but um I don't want to get so stressed out because I get stressed out really easily and I will overthink things way too much but if I was someone like my boyfriend where he's very 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 organized he's a virgo i don't know if you guys are into zodiacs but he's a virgo and he think he like loves to set goals loves to be very punctual loves to be very um just strict on himself i guess as far as like um just like anything um if I was like him I would probably for sure have quarterly goals but I'm honestly a hot mess you guys like I don't do that because I just can't I don't even know how so yeah that's my answer to the question um let me refresh and see if I have any other questions before the video ends just in case um let's see so I don't think I have any other questions you guys I think that is it but let me see. I might have a few seconds to answer another question here. Um, do you have a lot of reoccurring clients or more new? So I have a lot of reoccurring clients and new clients as well. Um, I would say like if I can count off the top of my head, I probably have about 10 girls that are very, very loyal and they order for me monthly, um, like big orders. And then a lot of new people come and go. Um, so it just depends, honestly. I feel like um, a lot of people that are that order for me are people that are ordering press-ons for the very first time. And I know this because a lot of people, I can just tell. Like I can tell with the way they're trying to order and then also the way that... Um, they send me their sizing like you can just tell that they probably never used press-ons like this type before um so they end probably end up realizing that it's probably not for them or something I'm honestly not sure another thing a lot of people would probably rather go to the salon just because the convenience of just getting it done in that moment like you can walk into a salon that takes walk-ins any day you want and just get a set done and that's it um and for me like I do have a, a long processing time so I feel like a lot of people might not like that they might order once and they might realize that they don't want to wait another three weeks for another nail set so honestly um I don't I'm not sure I'm not sure why but yeah that's kind of like it's kind of like a mix for me it's kind of a mix of both um another question that I got um is what are some tips on trying to be stern on your business prices? So this is actually a really good question. Um, honestly, the people that are for you will be for you. And if there's people that cannot afford your products, um, the way I'm, I'm going to be so for real right now. Like I'm going to be so, so for real. 
if they want nails for like twenty dollars and your work is worth more than that they should just go to amazon they should just order them in bulk they should just go to shein they should go to aliexpress they should go somewhere else and buy nails in bulk because these type of nails that we do hand painted all the gel products we have to buy all the equipment anything it is not for nails that are meant to be $25, $30 for like a bunch of designs. Like I'm just going to be so serious. So um, charge what you think you're worth. Do not undervalue yourself. And just be honestly, even if you feel like being too nice, don't be too nice. Because at the end of the day, those people might at the last second realize that they want to go with someone else just because they have cheaper prices. So if we all make our prices fair and all make them even think about it it'll be equal to everyone you know what I mean um I hope that kind of makes sense but that's the way I see it um somebody asked how do you do uh so no someone said I'm doing retail nails I want to know how to package and ship I'm 13 so um to package and ship I would recommend using pirateship.com if you're gonna do like I'm not sure what retail mean, retail nails means. Maybe you're buying them in bulk, like press-on nails from somewhere. So um, you can uh, create like a website. Uh, I don't have a website just because I haven't I haven't made one yet, but I am in the process of making one. But um, you can create a website and then it'll just let people order and then you'll, you'll have a shipping label automatically. Or if you want to ship on your own, um, just use pirateship.com. That's what I use and it works very well. You just pay the shipping fee. Um, you can choose how expensive or how less expensive you want it and it works very very well and to package you can use a bubble mailer and yeah that's pretty much all you need um, but yeah pirateship.com is the one I recommend the like website I recommend the most but yeah you guys we are done with the video um, it is so long it's almost an hour long it's gonna take me so long to upload but this was the finished result I didn't record me putting the crystals on because I totally forgot to record I don't know how but I ended up putting crystals on and right here I'm showing you guys my flowers from Rose Forever New York these are some really beautiful flowers they are literally perfect for the background of your nails um, literally it looks so beautiful so elegant and I love them for Valentine's Day um, I do have a code with them that I will put right here right here and the thing I love about them is that they can last up to one year but the last ones that I had lasted me three years you guys before they finally started to fall apart that is insane and I love them so much so yeah um that's all for this video I really hope you guys enjoyed it I hope you guys learned something new or at least just learned a little bit more about me if you're new to my channel and I will see you guys in the next one bye